Okay, good morning, everybody. So today, the plan for today is to, uh, first of all, we are going to do a couple of exercises, at least two, about what we have seen uh, in the last class. And then we will move uh, forward with objects and function and a few examples also on those things. So this is the first, let's say, exercise that we are going to do. It's mostly a recognition exercise. Um, you see, it's basically all um, console log, so printing things and making uh, um, equivalents, hmm? checking if something like uh, not a number is equal to not a number. That sounds reasonable. Or that null is equal, double equal, not triple equal. So not the strict equivalence to false, etc., etc. Hmm? So the first, let's say, before running this and see what happens, uh, let's do this game. Let's call it game. Uh, that is predict what is going to print on screen. Hmm? So, for instance, let's write here as a comment and then we will check if they are the prediction that we are going to make are correct or, no, or not. Better, the prediction that you are going to make are correct or not. I'm not going to predict the results. I should know, in theory, what is the result. So, line 5. N A N, that if you remember is not a number is a and then there's prints the type of not a number mm? so boolean integer number um, undefined the type so what is the type without running the program because if you run the program you are cheating without running the program which is the the results of this console log to you number, number. then not a number is strictly a equal to not a number. True or false? True. I'm going to write whatever you say and then we will check. Is null not strictly equal, but equal, but not strictly equal to false? True. Is the empty space uh, equal but not strictly equal to false true is a tree equal to, to true not strictly equal just true is a zero equal again but not strictly equal to minor minus zero that doesn't really make sense but javascript has a minus zero so True. Are you sure? True, false, what we're going to put it here? i less convinced than before. So we're, who is going to say true? Okay, so the majority is clearly true. Then, true plus true. And here we move to the, uh, as is written in the top, strange JavaScript behavior and where to find it. Um, true plus true is equal to it could be an error it could be true it could be something or false whatever what do you think it could be true plus true one option for not a number other options Maybe a string. Well, okay, but we, uh, we need to choose one. Pro pro possibly. So not a number is an option. True, true. So concatenation of two strings is another option. Which option do you prefer? Okay, who is going to say not a number? Okay, not, not a lot of people. Who is going to say true, true? Okay, and everybody else? 
Who knows? Maybe the value, but we need to choose one, the win one, one, one option. So maybe two, maybe two. Okay, let's put it like we don't know, and then we will see the results. I have one of these options is the right one. I can tell you. Um, so true is different from one, but this is the strictly, strictly different. So no conversion. True or false? Uh, five number plus ten string. It's equal to error. Do you agree with error? Five one zero. Error five one zero. You need to pick one. So who is going to say 510, so 500, and then, okay, 510. One is minor than two, then this minor than three. This is a valid syntax. You can put uh, things like that in JavaScript, like in math. So numbers minor than another number, minor than another thing. You can do that. So one is minor than two, and it is minor than three. It's true or false? Is true or false? True. And uh, three is major than two, that is major than one. True or false? In all of these, keep in mind that all the operation except the triple equal and it, let's say triple, triple disequal, so the strict disequalance is doing conversion. Mm, always the conversion. Also the major, minor, etc. So three major than two, major than one. True or false? Who say true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who think false? Okay, and the other one? Pick a side. Okay, let me ask again. And the, the not sure should choose. Who is going to say true? Okay, who is going to say false? Okay, so the true win. And that win here, and then maybe the false was right. Who knows? So, 0.2 plus 0 0.1 is strictly equal to 0 0.3. All numbers, not string here. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 strictly equal to 0 0.3. True or false? False? True? Likely we just have two options. It's true or false. So who is going to say true? Who is going to say false? So more true. And finally, this is not true false. What is the operation, the results of this operation? So this a B string plus an A string plus an unary operation plus A hmm, that were in the slides last time, plus A as a string. And the results of this is a string, let's say. It's a word. Which is this word? B A I listen to two different words. B A and we are fine with B A and I suppose that ends with A. And here what we put none none, none doesn't exist in JavaScript. It's null in uh, not undefined, not a number, but null none not a number. Who is saying not a number? Who is saying uh, what you were saying? A? Uh, B. B? Why B? Oh, because A plus A is B. Who is saying B? 
it's strange, but not so strange. Um, B, who's going to say B except him? Okay, uh, who's going to say A? Okay, again, no, okay, one person. And everybody else? So the, the majority was not a number. So let's keep the majority. Okay, so now let's try to run this and see how many predictions you get and why hmm? you didn't get them or why it's, it's correct the prediction. Hmm? Not strange. So, not a number is a number. Good. Prediction taken. Because not a number is actually a number in uh, JavaScript. Not a number is triple equal to not a number. False. So, wrong prediction. Because not a number is not equal to anything. Not even itself. As in general. Okay, so not a number is not equal to even not a number. Okay, so th there is not another reason for that. It's just it's just like that. Okay, it's it's in the language. Not a number is not e not is not equal to anything. Mm? You can check if something is not a number, but not not a number is equal to is always false. Okay, so uh, null is equal to false. You said true, and the answer was false. Why? With the conversion, clearly. Here we have a conversion in place. Why? Null is not equal to false, not strictly speaking. We said the null is one of the falsy value, so in theory, it makes sense the results is true, but actually it's not. Hmm? No, because it makes make conversion. Hmm? Uh, no, false is converting to a number that is zero. Uh, null is no, I don't think so. Hmm. But null is another case similar to not a number. Is is not equal to to almost anything with, with the conversion. Uh, the string is, the empty string is false. Yes, you, you got the prediction because the string is, in this case, um, are both converted into, into zero. Uh, tree is equal to true and it's false. Why tree is not equal to true? Because true is converted to one. So three is not equal to one. I have uh, none double equal to none or not a number double equal to not a number. Could I have also false? We can try later. Let's let finish this. So keep in mind that we can add one line for that. Hmm? So we can see. Okay, so three is not equal to true because true is converted in one and three is clearly different than one. Hmm? So this is false, because it's a double equal, it's a conversion. Uh, zero, it's double equal to z the minus, minus zero, it's true. Uh, true plus true is two. Because true are converted in numbers, and then the operation is performed. So one plus one, so one point for the, the person there. Um, True is different from one, true, because this case is not, is a strict difference, so no conversion, and actually true is different from one without the conversion. Um, five plus 10 string is 510, number, as you were saying, so they are converted both in string and Put together so yes this is actually a string 510 so they're both converted in string and 
put together, concatenation of string. Hmm? And so five concatenate ten. Uh, one minor than two, minor than three is true, as you predicted, and three major than two, major than one is false. Why? is not major than one, exactly. Because it's also the other one was performed couple by couple. So one minor than two is true. And true is converted in one and one in minor than three. So the all operation is true. The other one, as he was saying, three major than two, that is true. So it's one, but one is not major than one. And so the result is false. Uh, the other one, you get it, why it's... Um, oh, sorry, no, uh, you didn't get it. So why this is false? Why 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 is not equal to 0 0.3? I mean, mathematically, is is correct. is is actually zero to three, but but it's not here. It's false. Why it's false? In comparison, is first. Sorry, the comparison. Uh, no, no. It's actually do do the sum and the comparison. So. No, 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 it's not that. Mm, so floating point, error. Floating, po floating point errors. Mm. JavaScript, like Python, for instance, is not precise with floating point uh, operations. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is, we can try here, node, uh, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 is. Uh, 0 0.300004 and that 4 is the one that make the equivalence wrong mm -hmm. so when using floating point in javascript but also in python actually happens the same you don't have the right the precision so results need to be rounded oh, almost always with floating point that's because not all floating point numbers are representable on, um, in binary, in binary scale, so you don't have the right precision. So that is false. And the last one is banana, yes. Uh, it's written as banana because the uh, unary operator of a string is actually not a number, and so that string becomes BA, not a number, and AN, and A. And that's concatenation of string. Is there an option to set the floating point precision? Uh, not at the, the general level, not at the language level, because it also depends on the, the, the environment that they're using, so in this case it's not, and also depends on the implementation, depends on a lot of things. So it's not possible in general. Uh, so what you, you need to do if you operate with floating point number is either use some library that handles floating point numbers more accurately, for, for instance, mathematical operation, or when you do operations in the function that does the operation, tell to the function if the function support it, uh, which is the rounding. So I want to round to the precision. I want to round to the second uh, number after the, the point in this case, so the third number, etc. But not generally, because actually in this case it's 0 0.3, but in other case it could be 0 0.299999. Mm -hmm. So, well, well, not in this case, because it's 0 0.3. But in other operation, you can have not more than the results, but less than the results. So you need not to just to cut in some cases, but round in most of the cases. OK, and then we had um, his question that was, can you remember me? Can you remind me? Okay, let me put here. So with double equal, 
and the same with null, right? And we can also try, since we are here, with undefined, that is the other value that we have. So this exercise is to think about the the equivalence and the undefined and the, the um, defined. And the, the things that we have, the types that we have seen the other day, because it's difficult to make it all of them in one single reasonable program that does something. Hmm? So in this case, uh, we can try. So let me run this. No, let me quit from this environment and let me run this again so so not a number equal not strictly equal to not a number is still false because again not a number is not equal to anything uh, null is equal to null in this case uh, sorry my bad Nevertheless, so if it's true in the double equal, is this is, is true in the triple equal? Is diff, is difficult that is false in single equal in the, in, oh, sorry, uh, it's not single but in the double equal. So if it's true in the strictly equality, it's difficult that becomes false in the double equality. So it's not strict equality because if strictly is already the same, there is no conversion in place that happens. Right, because it's already the same type. Hmm? So you see, undefined is actually equal to undefined, and null is actually equal to null. So you can use those, but not a number is not equal to nothing, and not even itself, not even with the conversion, hmm? because it's already a number, so it cannot is not converted to anything else. Okay, so we can keep this here. Let me move that this here so that we. Heavier. Um, okay. Okay. So keep in mind that uh, we have special values like not numbers, and in other case like three major than two major than one it's operated by couple by couple pair by pairs and that when you have a conversion it's actually conversion thing so boolean is converting number in this case so three is not equal to one clearly so it's always it's always better to have the strictly equality if you want to really do an equivalence of things Yes, it would be true. Because three is a true true fee value. But with the double equal is converted. So one of the two is converting the other, and typically the Boolean is converting number. So there is a, 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 a tree of decision for conversion that I don't remember by memory. I can tell you that nobody remembers by memory, but it's in the standard of the language. It's not even the documentation, it's in the standard of the language, it's in the ECMAScript document. And it should be more or less that uh, things are converted. Uh, so the, the, the lower level are numbers and string. Hmm? So they are trying to convert. So Boolean is converting in this case number because the other one is a number. And in other cases are converting a string. So these are the two lower level of conversion. Hmm? as primitive type. Okay. End of the game. Any really stra strange questions that you may have up to this point? Okay, so let's do uh, an exercise. Well, let me remove this, that's not needed. And, and let me create a, a score.js.
So, uh, in the folder that we have on GitLab, we have two exercises. We're going to do the first one here, and then I can give you the solution of the second one. Uh, and these two exercises are about arrays and string. And the first one also about numbers and other operation. But it's not like before console.log, but it's actually let's try to do something. Hmm? Let's have a goal in uh, um, our... Mm, let's do a small program that does something, not only printing operations. So the first exercise, say, uh, that we are going to do together uh, now is develop a small JavaScript program to manage the score given to you, to your user, in a question and answer website, like Stack Overflow. So you have logged in on Stack Overflow, you have your user on Stack Overflow, you receive some points, some score, in the various answer that you, you gave around the platform, and in your profile, you have the sum. Let's imagine that you have the sum. You have a collection of all the score you get in the website. So in one, in one answer, you get three points because you have three plus from some people. In another one, you get minus three because you have three minus. It was a really bad answer. And in another, you have 100 points because you did uh, it was the, the definitive answer, the, the one approved answer. So you have scores along the platform and they are collected, let's say, in your profile and you see them as an array. Hmm? So you have an array of scores, numbers, integer, positive or negative. And what this exercise is asking you to do is, first, it's three things. First, define an array, so a JavaScript array, with all the scores you received in chronological order. So, we are going to write an array with numbers, positive and negative, randomly. Uh, in this moment, we are going to embed the score in the source code, and we are going to ignore everything else in the website. We just have the scores. And the exercise say, ask you two things. First, duplicate the array with changes, and the second thing is print hmm, the arrays, the duplicate array in the original one. So the duplicate array should have no negative score. So whatever negative score should be removed from the array. And we need to keep in mind how many negative scores we add. So we, if we remove three negative scores, we should keep the number three somewhere. Then we need to eliminate the two lowest ranking scores. Removing the negatives will be positive number scores, but the lower. And then we need to add 2n, nn plus 2, so the number of negative score we removed plus 2, new score at the end of the array with a value that is equal to the average of the existing score. Hmm? So if in an array we have 100 minus 1 and 3, the first operation eliminates minus 1, the second operation eliminates 3, because 100 is bigger. And the third operation adds 2 score, that is the average of 100, that is, in this case, 100, because one number. Hmm? And so in the end, we will have 100, 100, 100 in the, in the array, in this example. And then we need to print both array. Um, so the original one and the... Um, and the other one. Let's, let's ignore the average because it's the same operation that we did before. Okay? So, let's do it. How, what we are going to write here? First thing. Before const let whatever. Good. Use strict. And then we can say const scores equal, um, let's say 20, 30, minus 5, minus 1, 100, minus 3, and 50. Semicolon. Just random numbers. Okay? Do you see over there in the end? It's fine? Not really. Better? 
Okay. Um, okay, so it's an array. Hmm? Uh, why we're we're using const? Yes, but why were we using const and not let? We don't want to modify the original bit. But it's embedded at first, so. Yeah, yes, but so we actually here we can also write let scores. It's not it's not a problem. Uh, because if you remember uh, with const we can we cannot put into scores something that is different from an array, but even with const, we can edit the array in place. Mm? So it's always, it's always preferable. Mm? If you remember, we spoke about briefly about the Google style guide that we were getting inspirations. According to that guide, it's always preferable to use const when possible and then let when it's not. But in this case, actually, doesn't really make a big difference because, well, let will allow us to also replace the array with a number. Const doesn't allow us to do this, but we can still edit the array. Hmm? But const is, is a good choice. But also let could have been, uh, could have been fine. Then, so we have the array of the number. Hmm? So define an array with all the score you received, and these are the score. Duplicate the array and eliminate the negative scores. <coughs> oh, the, the spread operator. Are you are you okay? We are going to duplicate the array as it as it is. It's not wrong, but it has implications. So let's try to say what we are going to do. So we are going to duplicate the array. How are we going to eliminate the negative numbers? We don't have functions, no filter yet. We cannot use sort because we need functions and we don't know how, because sort is sorting alphabetically. So sort will sort minus one, probably 100, 20, 30, minus one, 50. So it's sorting alphabetically as a string. Hmm? So it's not something that we can use now. We need to specialize sort with a function, but we, we do no function yet. So we cannot use sort in this moment. Yes, I would, I would use filters of sort. In, in two weeks, we are going to use, let's say, filter or sort to do that. But we, we cannot now. Let's consider a one loop. One loop? Check the element if minor of zero. Another element. And we remove the element. Yes, concatenate with elements that are positive. Okay? So I'm going to do a variant of that. So I'm going to create another. So instead of duplicate and then removing, what we can do is just adding the non negative number in duplicating the array. So we are not following strictly the definition, so it's not duplicating and eliminating, but it's creating a new array with just a positive number. So that will avoid the duplication and then a, a cycle to get the, the negative number and then a remo a removing those numbers. We just add the number we want to keep. Hmm? So we can call it better scores, for instance, as an empty array, and then we can do four, four, what are, we, what are we going to write in for? It's an array. What's the preferred way for cycling on an array? Non for in. The other one. No? Well, first of all, we need to define a variable. And then? Of. Mm -hmm. So, arrays for of objects that we are going to see today score, uh, sorry, for in. Mm -hmm. So, everything that is iterable, like an array, is of. Or we could have used the classical for, for e equal to zero, e minor than, 
number E++. Uh, and then we can say if uh, S is major than zero, uh, better score. Oh, uh, we can add things in an array. Do you remember? Push. Okay, so now in theory, we have the better score array with just the positive number. And now we need to know how many negative number we have removed. <laughs> yes, we can do else within the if and in increment um, a variable. Sorry, so no, let, I, didn't, I didn't hear, sorry. Yes, exactly. We, need, we can, for instance, subtract the length of the array. That was the same thing that you were saying. Exactly. That's another way that is actually uh, nicer than in the loop incrementing a variable, etc. So we can say let negatives, or no, it's called nn, equal to zero. And then we can say that nn is equal to score dot length minus better score dot length. Hmm? So just the number of elements that we removed. Okay. Any doubts until here? Later? Okay, the next things that the exercise is asking us is to remove the two elements now in better scores that are the minor one, the lower one. So in, in our case, we need to remove uh, 20 and 30 because we removed the, all the negatives and we have 20, 30, 150. So we need to remove 20 and 30. How can we remove 20 and 30? Uh, yes, in this moment we could do with pop <coughs> because we, uh, but uh, we can remove, we cannot remove just uh, an element at the beginning of the end of array because we, so in this moment these are, these happen to be at the beginning of the array. But if instead we have here 30, so the same content, just a different order. We, we cannot just remove at the beginning of the end of the array because we don't know where the, the lower numbers are in the array. So we, use split, split we can use the method splice to remove it, but we need to know the index. So like zero and the index, index? Yes, but if we use zero, then we, if we change this array, the program stops working. Find what? The indexes of the number that they need to remove. But again, if we change this array, we cannot say find 20, because maybe 20 is not there anymore. No, we can do a loop to find the lower to number. <coughs> OK, we can find the lower to number. And the lower to number, it's also called in mathematics, are you called the, the lower number in a collection? Minimum. The minimum. Is there a method? Is there is a method to call? So if you remember last time, we said that there is uh, mat dot something, and this dot something is minimum, maximum, etc., etc., a series of mathematical operations, hmm? uh, sin, cosine, etc. So we can use minimum to get the minimum hmm? twice. We need to remove the two lowest numbers, so the minimum twice of the array. Hmm? So we can calculate the first one and then um, get the minimum and then remove it. And then get the second one, minimum, and then remove it. So another option was clearly using sort and sorting them numerically from the lowest to the highest, but we cannot yet use sort because that would be ordered again alphabetically and is not the right results that we have. Okay, but that will be easier and shorter. But without sort, we can use mat.min. So mat.min, let me pick it here in the documentation because 
Math.min does not accept an array. Hmm? So let me pick here math.min. So math.min, there is the signature, accept a number of values, an infinite, let's say, number of values, separated by comma, but not an array, just numbers. So instead we have the numbers in an array, right? So how can we put numbers from the array in that format? The, the three dots is a spread operator. Yes, that with the three dots, so it is a spread operator. Yes, with the, the spread operator, we are going to, to spread the array, hmm? open the array. So here we can write three dots, uh, better score. And store the results somewhere. Hmm? Like mean score, we get the minimum of a better score and store somewhere the minimum number. Hmm? That's the operation of the, um, of, of the mat mean. Then we can have, the, we need the index. Hmm? If we can do better score dot index of, hmm? better array dot index of give us the index of an element if present in the array. And in this case, we can have the score of mean, the index of mean score. And finally, we can remove it. Better score dot splice index one. Hmm? So if you remember, we can pick also splice here. Splice is a method that changes the content of the array in place. So it's one of those methods that perform operation in place and not giving a copy of the array. And remove or replace existing elements. In this case, we need to remove. But with the same command, with the same func with the same method, we can also remove one element and add another element in the same place. So replace the element with another. We are not interested now, but we can, and it accept, accept two parameter. Well, a number of parameter, but let's say that in this case, we're going to use two parameter, the index. So the starting point were to remove elements and how many elements we need to remove. So in our case, we need to remove one element at a specific index. So we need to give splice the index and telling splice that we need to remove one element, just the one of the index. If we wanted to remove two elements, we could have done index two. And from that, that index, you would have removed two elements. But in this case, one element. Okay, and then we need to redo the same thing twice. So let me copy and paste. And clearly, mean score, if I copy and paste exactly, let mean score and let index give me an error. Why? Because they already declared before. So I cannot redeclare a variable let or const. I can reuse it. So if I remove let from both, I'm going to reuse the variable that I declared before, but I cannot redeclare it. Okay, now, so we removed the negatives and store the numbers of negatives we removed. We removed the minimum, the two minimum values, whatever they are in the array, whatever position they are in the array. So it's, it's general as, as a way of working. If we change the arrays, this still work. Now we need to add the same number of elements we removed that were negative, plus two, at the end of the array with a, equal, with a value equal to the average of the existing score. So what is the first thing we need to do? 
the average. How we are going to compute the average? No, we are not going to use the reduce because we need functions for that. Hmm? Uh, Math.average? Um, no, there is no math.average. Yeah, we need to do the average like manually. Okay, so um, how do we compute the average? Yes, how we do the sum? In code, we need a loop. Yes, for what I'm going to write here, const s of better score. Mm, no, I don't. It's average is enough. Let's one less variable. Let's do the sum then we we divide for the numbers. Hmm? So so the sum and then how do we get the denominator of this operation? Yes, AVG equal uh, AVG divided by etc. And you can also write, hmm? you can have plus equal and minus equal are also divided equal and um, multiplied equal hmm? if we if you use the same variable twice. So you can write average equal average divided better score dot length, which is the number of the elements or since average is duplicated, you can remove one. And then we need to uh, round the average. We have said, so average equal mat.round. That's one of the methods to also solve the problem with the um, well, not exactly this, but one of the methods in math to solve the problem with floating point precision. And so we can round average. And round by default, round the number to the closest integer. Hmm? So to the closest integer. So we push at the same time, round it and push it. Um, you're saying like here, dot push? No, we cannot push. Oh, you want to better score that push open parenthesis like that? Yes, but let's do another. Yes, it's possible. But let's do one line, one operation per line for now. Um, and also because we need to push twice. So, so now we need to push these values twice. Hmm? So better score dot push. Average twice. So I can do a loop or I can do copy and paste. And then we need to print both array. So console.log scores and console.log better score. Because we need to add twice the average. Oh, no, sorry, not twice. We need to add the average two plus the number of negative elements we removed. It's not twice. Right, because we need to add the score, how many times we removed the negative number plus two. So if we had zero negative number, it was two, but we have three negative number, so we need to add five times, right? So. What do we need to do to add the better score five times? Or NN plus two times? A for loop, yes, a loop. Hmm. So for, uh, in this case, we can use the 
classical, so let E equal to zero, E minor than NN plus two, E plus plus. Because we don't know with another array if the, how many negative numbers we're going to remove. Maybe this case, in this case is three, in other case could be four or zero or one. So we need to, to keep it general. And in JavaScript, there is no, there is not a way to, easy way to, to say, uh, to use the same const uh, in or cost of to do this operation with a number, we should have uh, put the nn plus two in an array and then iterate on the array. But that's in this moment is, is quicker because it's the, the normal for loop that we have. Because in JavaScript, we also have this for loop. Okay. Any questions about that? And then we are going to run it to see if it works. It seems clear. Uh, can you repeat the last part about the iteration? This one? This one? The alternative of using so the alternative, so this is the simplest alternative for what we know now. Hmm? Uh, because uh, so in JavaScript we have three ways, more than three, but let's say three standard ways to do the for loop. One is for something of array, like we did before. The other one is for something in object that we didn't use it here because we don't have objects that are not iterable. And the third one is the classical for. for variable to initialize, variable minor, major, than something, and increment on decrement of that variable. The, the C way of doing the classical way in C to do the for. If we want to make it more complicated, we could have used const of array, but we would have created an array with the same number of elements that nn plus two to use that other methods. So it was, it is more, more complicated in that way, but it's another way to, to do it, right? So we need something that is long nn plus two. So we can create an array with random numbers that is long nn plus two, and then iterate on those numbers, for instance. But in this case, it was simpler to do that. Hmm? Yes. Oh, there, there is no... We can, no, not the letter, but the const and the letter. Yes, here you say. Yeah, because where we don't use the const also that. So actually is me writing let instead of const, so it wasn't a premeditate. Um, but... We can use it. That's a good question. So here I can for sure. Because for every iteration, the variable is, is recreated from scratch. So it's not, it's not a problem. Here we are incrementing it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not 100% sure. To, it, my gut feeling is that we need to use let, but uh, let's try. If you give an error, we cannot. That's, that's easy. Um, GD exercise, and this is called score. Indeed. So in that case, we cannot because, as imagined, the I++ operate on the same variable. So we need to change that variable and cost cannot. In the other case, it's... But also here, you can use let. So it's, it's just a matter of preference. Here is the same using let or const because it's, it's, the variable is totally handled by the for. Automatically, incremented, decremented, whatever the for needs to do is done. In this case, incrementing because it's navigating. Here, you decide what you need to do. Increment, decrement, etc. So you need to have access to the variable. Okay, so you, there it, you must use let. Here, you can use let if you want. Okay, so let's try this. So these are the results. 
20, minus 5, minus 5, minus 1, 100, minus 3, 30, 50, that was the original array. And the other array has 150, that's are the original value. And then the average between 150, that is 75. Uh, added five times because we removed uh, three negative elements and so we added three plus two five elements okay so one thing that so just to link to the question that he made uh, one thing that i'm going to do in this course is trying not to give you if possible the answer but to understand why the answer is that way. So if I can generate an error here, instead of telling you, no, you have to use let, trust me, I will generate the error. Because if you alone will generate the error, will see that error, you at least have seen at least once why this error is generated and for what. Instead of, tell, instead of having me telling you, trust me, I have the knowledge. Okay, so that's one thing that we, if we can try it, we will, we are going to try it. If we can, if we cannot, clearly, we are going not to try. Okay, any questions about this exercise? Uh, do you want to see how how is going do you want to see how the um the minimum can be done with sort or should we skip that if you're curious we can do it yes so if we want to remove and then it's the same for the the negatives, but let's do it for the minimum. So if you want to sort something to remove the two minimum values, what's the, the logical process to do that? You want to remove the two minimum values with, and that with using sorting the array. So what we are going to do logically in order. First, sorting the array from the lower to the higher value. Then. We need to remove the, the minimum two, the, the lower. So we, we don't need to compare. We need to remove them with shift. Hmm? Because shift remove from the beginning of the array. So if we sort from the lowest to the highest, shift remove the, the lowest. That is the two minimum value that we want to remove after removing the negatives clearly. But here we have already removed the negatives. So, better scores dot sort. So sort is another operator that works in place. And we have seen this last time briefly. But you can see that if we sort this array, 134, 21, 100,000, hmm, this sort is alphabetically. So 1, 100,000, 2, 3, 4, hmm, everything that starts with 1 is before everything that starts with 2, no matter how many zeros you have after. Hmm. So this is how sort work let's say alphabetically, converting everything in a string, or better, considering everything in the char set, in the Unicode char set, mm? and consider the first value, and one is, is lower than two. So we need to change this. And to change this, we need to define a function within sort, so this is a preview of something that we're going to see in the next hour. Mm? a function within sort that specify how we are going to sort 
the element, which is the criteria of sorting. This is not the alphabetical one, but should be numerical. And this should be a function that sort apply to every element of the function, to the, to the array, and replace the elements and put the elements in the right order. So in our case, and the function has always two values, a and b, uh, and a and b are two elements of the comparison, and then sort, do all the comparisons, and return the results. The array, replace the array in place. So if we are going to use that syntax that we don't yet know, but let's copy what is written there. This is the sorting for numbers, from the minimum to the highest. A comparison in which we remove, uh, in which we see if the f we do the first element minus the second, and if the element is um, it's major than zero, it stays where it is. If it's minor, it, it moves. Uh, and this is written here somewhere. Okay, so this is the sorting, and then at that point we need to do better score dot shift twice. Because in that moment we have the lowest number at the beginning of the array. So we can just remove from the beginning. We are sure in that moment that the, the first two elements are the two lowest number that we have removing the negatives. So here, we, what we are seeing is that we have a function that define another function, and together they do things. That is something very, very common in JavaScript. And this is one of the three ways to define a function in Python, in uh, JavaScript. Yes, typically when you have, um, yes, so this is a function right in line, basically. We could have also had a function that we call the compare function with A and B or whatever two, num two values we want to, to call it and then do the operation. But when it's short as operation like this one, that is one minus the other, so not long, in JavaScript it's very, very typical to write it in line. It's incredibly common, it's idiomatic to write it in line, instead of creating another function with name and they use it here. Hmm? So this is an anonymous function. What in other language you call lambda function, right? This is called an array function, a narrow function here, because of the arrow in the middle. Okay, so this is alternative. alternative um, with sort to the minimum. And this is again just a preview of the of the functions that we are going to to see. Okay, any questions? And I, I always try to keep the the documentation open because you know, for instance, here, the function is major than zero, sort A after B. If the minor than zero, sort A before B. If it's strictly equal to zero, keep the original position. Mm -hmm. So this operation should always, must always be something major than zero, minor than zero, or equal to zero. Cannot be a letter, because a, let a letter will not give a a sorting, an appropriate sorting for how sorted works. And again, all of this is actually in the documentation, so that's why I keep always the documentation open, also to, to remember and to show you how things, where things are found in the documentation. Yes? If you sort this way, the uh, splice will be different, because we don't use many ones. Yes, you can use shift in this case. Because you, otherwise you need to compute the in well. You can also use splice with 0, comma 2. Because you need to remove the first two elements, that's true. But again, yes. Or you can also use shift. Can you use the splice instead of 
Sorry? Can we use a splice? Yes, we can use splice 0, 0,2 instead of 2 sh shift, absolutely. We need just to remove the first two elements. So yeah, absolutely. Instead of copying shift is actually nicer to use splice. Okay? So before doing a break, let me say two things about objects and then we are going to have a break. But just two things about objects. So the two things that I want to say about objects are actually um, forget whatever you know about objects in other programming language. Because these are different. Okay? So in, uh, in other programming language, you have classes, right? How many of you know Java, for instance? Okay, so you have classes in Java, right? You build an object, you have a class, and you build an object from that class. Because Java, as, as a paradigm, is object-oriented by, by nature. JavaScript is not object-oriented. It's called prototype-oriented. And actually, it didn't add didn't have the class keyword for a very long time. Now it has the class keyword, but the class keyword is actually is called a syntactically sugar for the object. It's just another way, more familiar for people that came from a program, uh, an object-oriented programming language to do what objects are doing since the beginning. So forget about classes, forget about objects that you know. These are different. And then again, you have class as a keyword also here, but just a different way to write what you can write without class. Shorter, nicer, but with strict mode enabled, but it's just a different way. So in JavaScript, objects exist without classes, and they are typically created direct, directly on the run. And you can add properties to an object, remove properties to an object, redefine property of an object at any moment. You can create an object at the beginning of the file and then at a certain point you decide that you want to add another property because you forgot about it. Or you add a method to an object. That's after the definition of the object. And as, as such also there is no access control method for anything in an object. Everything is public. Private, protected, does not exist. It's just things in an object. And also, there is no real difference between properties and methods except where you call it. The properties is without the parentheses and methods as the parentheses. And as I said the last time, functions are actually objects. So when you define a method within an object, you are defining an object without an ob within an object. So an object is a not ordered collection of properties. They could be properties or real properties like name and a value, or they can be functions in the form of properties. And you store, like an associative array, you store property value, you get uh, the value through the keyword or the name. And property names uh, must be string, must be unique in the object, in the object. Instead, the value of the properties could be whatever you want. Could be any JavaScript value. Could be an inter a number, could be an array, could be another object, could be a function, mm, that are methods in this case. Mm. So are all of these. And let me create a new file here so that we can see objects. And how do you create an object? Mm. So we can use strict always we can for instance create an object for a movie and so this is how you create an object it's an empty object just a variable with the 
the parentheses, and then you can define properties. So, for instance, a movie. Tell me the title of a movie. A title of a movie? Inception. Do you know the director of Inception? Yes. Okay, well, it's good. Um, the genre? Oh, sorry, not sequel. The genre? Uh, sci fi. The duration? Uh, three hours. Um, that is 180 minutes. Well, we don't need to be really, really precise, but it's fine. So this is an object. And we can print the object. Or we can print or access to an element of the object, a property like the title, and we can access to the title in two ways. One is the, with the square parentheses and the name, the string representing the value, and the other one is with the dot notation. So movie.title, movie, square parenthesis, string title are in this case the same. So if we run this, we can see well, the object, just the plain representation of the object, exactly as we wrote, just in one line. And then we see that the title is actually Inception, and in both cases is printed as Inception. So when we can use the dot notation or the square notation, so one thing that I didn't tell you is that actually this could be written in this way <coughs> or can, can be written as a string, like this. These are equivalent. So, but clearly, if I write this as a string, I can use this as the key. Spaces. Right? It's a string. I can do whatever I want within a string. So, in this case, can I use the dot notation? No, because here I can write title of the movie, but here I cannot write title of the movie because it's not one word. Hmm? So while this is legit, hmm, this disable this the possibility to use this as a key with the dot notation. Hmm? So if you keep that of single word, they are the same, uh, or if you don't use special characters that are not recognized as variables, it's the same. So here, it's something that is a valid JavaScript variable. With the square notation is everything that is valid as a string. Mm? So according to what you're going to use here, in the properties, you can use one or the other, or both. Okay, so let me put this back to title because it's clearly that we are in an object called movie, so it's clear that the title is referring to the movie, but was just to make the uh, example. Okay, and can we write this? Why not? Because title? Because title in this moment is not a variable. And if we do something like this, it's okay. Because this one is getting the variable that is called in that way and whatever content as the variable. So in this case, it will print title. But if this variable is contains genre, 
the console log line 10 will print not the title property but the general property because it's access the variable Uh, this is the, this is the must be unvariable because it's the one that you created here is the object. So why it would print a variable that is not part of the object? Uh, but no, generate is a part of the object. So it writes the property written in the variable. So in this case, yes, exactly. So in this case. If this is a variable, it access the variable, take the content of the variable, and put it here. So movie, in this case, would be movie, square, open string, genre. Hmm? But here, you must have a string. So if you have something that's not a string, like a variable, it pick the elements in the variable. Hmm? So this is just an edge case, but it happens to forget the quotes sometimes you write you don't put the quotes and then you say why is it not working why is it getting a wrong properties but well because maybe some you have a variable that's called like a properties and you get the value of the variable instead of the name of the property okay so here it's easy to forget quotes with with, with quotes you don't have any problem instead okay so let me also write this here so that you have and this is same as movie genre okay and then as i was saying you can add properties at any moment movie.director who is the director? Nolan either in this case in this way or with the other notation that's the same hmm? these are equivalent again with the same rules as before and you can also delete so if we print the movie here in this moment it will have four properties title genre duration and um, director oh yes sorry I forgot to comment that line see you can have now you have the four things inception title generate duration and also director will predict the object so you have an object and you added something at a certain point okay we can do 20 minutes of break now and then we will continue with objects and function later <laughs>